What's up everybody, welcome back, this is Forgo. And today we have Sneak Peek 5, and this is a really interesting sneak peek that we have. And But before we get into that, something I want to talk about is, in the last video, I talked about what kinds of reinforced CTPs you should use on your characters. Now that doesn't mean that you have to use reinforced CTPs. You do not need to use these things at all. There's nothing in this game that requires you to use them. And this is something I should have been more specific about in the other game, in the other video, something I should have clarified. But you don't need them. You absolutely don't. If you're trying to be competitive in the game, you're trying to do better in ABX, you're trying to do better in World Boss, then yeah, yeah, you do need to do it. But you don't need to do it. You don't need to do it to have fun in the game. And I was getting lots of requests to do a video about this, to show what characters would be better with having extra pierce or what would be better with having extra attack and so on and that's why i did that i saw a lot of dislikes a lot of you don't care for the reinforce system and i totally sympathize with that i don't really care for it either the fact that i was able to reforge lots of ctps since i already had many ctps prior to the reforge system because i'm a veteran i've been playing this game for a long time i had lots of ctp of like eggs ctps of destruction ctps or transcendences lying around and none of those obelisks were doing anything for me so i thought why not why not make a video go ahead and reforge a bunch of ctps since i already had a bunch of ctps already lying in my inventory and then giving my feedback on the characters that you should use what type of reforge ctps on and again those of you that don't like it you don't have to use this system you don't have to reforge ctps and that's completely fine. But I'm a player that is a content creator. So I want to have that content. I want to be able to provide that for everybody out there. And also, I want to do better. I want to do better in World Boss. I want to push World Boss. I want to push ABX more. I want to do better in those game modes. Because I find that if you stop caring and you're just like, oh, I'll just do this today and I'll just do this today, then the game becomes lackluster and it just isn't as fun. So pushing the envelope and pushing the limits and using some of these things that were implemented in the game is good for you to do better in the game. Now, again, I'm not trying to get you to reforge CTPs. You don't have to do it. Again, there's nothing in this game that requires it unless you're being super competitive. So I just wanted to throw that out at you guys and let you know that, you know, I'm on the same side as all you players. I don't care if you're the whaleiest of whales, if you're free to play, if you're modern spender, it doesn't matter to me. I'm on the side of the players. And, you know, in the future, I will be doing videos where I talk more about Reforce CTPs. But I'll also do videos where we're going to do more free-to-play setups. And try to balance out both of them in the content for all the players. Because, again, I'm on the side of all of you guys, or everybody. So let's take a look at Sneak Peek 5. This is pretty cool. So Sneak Peek 5, Greetings Ages, this is the same fragment of Marvel Future Fight. Adius, King Arthur, Attila, the Hun. This hero has spent time next to some of the most famous people in the history of the earth. She has enjoyed her time with humans for endless ages. Oh, and will continue her activities to protect humankind in Marvel Future Fight. And then you have the Sorceress of the Eternals. And you can pretty much guess who this is. Let's watch this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cersei. How freaking cool is that who is cersei well she's one of the eternals and she has an insane array of powers i mean she's pretty much near immortal she's just like icarus in that she can use her molecules to sustain Im immortality she has super strength she can heal telepathy she can summon illusions she has telekinesis <laughs> fly she can shoot cosmic energy she has image protection teleportation matter transmutation which is pretty wild man she's able to transmute nearly any item or being into almost whatever she wishes which is freaking crazy really op character i'm actually very interested to see what she's going to be like in this game and seeing that makes you think that icarus here might actually be a mid-month tier three it is very possible that he could be a mid-month tier three and i'll tell you what that actually would be pretty freaking awesome he is a universal type and my Icarus has 28,000 energy attack. He has max attack speed, 33 crit rate, 192 critical damage, 44% ignore defense, 
which I actually need to bump that up, give him a little bit more ignore defense, but he has max skill cooldown. And he does have the leadership tag, so you can actually take advantage of using White Fox. Now this is super free to play build on this guy. All level 20 gears, no Urus, again, only 44% ignore defense. But Icarus is freaking awesome. And you know, when I look at this character and I think, man, if he gets a tier three, he's gonna be pretty nutso. He's got the decrease all damage received by 30%. He has a silence and stun in capacitation, which is really great for PvP. He has a second skill, which has ignore target dodge rate by 30%, which should be really great for null and PvP. The third skill has damage accumulation that starts off at 0.6%. It's a damage accumulation based on how much damage you deal. You also have five seconds of immunity. Now, this guy actually has an insane amount of survivability. The fourth skill has all defense sound it stacks up to 50 percent it also has paralysis for two seconds and it has ignore targeting effect the only criticism i have of this skill is i wish it was an iframe it isn't if it was an iframe it would be even better for pvp but unfortunately it isn't you do have the invincibility which is nice that's going to give him that native super armor so he won't get guard broken unless it's by a penetration attack like the purple attacks from the world boss and then the fifth skill is an insanely long iframe that actually has 50% chance to penetrate everything for 7 seconds. And it does have all defense down. This is a really amazing skill for PvP. And in all honesty, if you go to the second skill, it's on a 4 second cooldown. It's actually a nice long iframe as well. Right now, I tested Icarus in PvP and he just died almost instantly. Honestly, these days in the game... PvP is pretty rough. You got a lot of players with reforced CTPs, reforced CTPs of regeneration, and they're just super, super strong. But Icarus is pretty nuts. I mean, look at this fist scale. And look at how beautiful this thing is. Look at how long it is. It's freaking crazy. And you can actually cancel that skill after he starts up. Once he starts shooting this right there, then you can go into the fourth skill. Right? And you can also move the fourth skill around like so. Which is pretty awesome, right? And then the second skill, instant iframe. And this is on a four second cooldown. Wow, wow. I think that's a complete iframe. Let me look here. Yeah, I think it's a full iframe. And then the one skill, this skill would leave you vulnerable in PvP or PvE. And then the third skill gives him that five seconds of immunity. Very cool. And the damage accumulation. Really, all you want to do with Icarus if you're playing with a damage proc and you're using him in PvE is you just want to hit the 3, then cancel into the 5. Put the proc on the 5, you'll get the all defense down from it. And the beautiful thing about this character is, the all defense down is the exact same on the 4 and the 5. So if you put the proc on the 4 or the 5, you're not going to cancel the all defense down. You're not going to limit yourself. So, if, for example, if one all defense down, like if the 4th skill was, had 30% all defense down and the 5th skill had 50% all defense down, you'd want to start off with the 5th skill. However, because they're the exact same, it really doesn't matter which one you start with, which is awesome. But I find because the fifth skill, you have to wait a little bit to cancel the skill. It's actually better just to let the proc play out during the fifth skill. And then his passive is freaking awesome. He gives him super armor, and then he gives him a sweet heal. When HP is below 99%, he gets a 4% recovery of max HP. With that and the decreased damage received, really makes him a very tanky character. He has the stage 6 power of Angry Hawk set. And he just has a critical damage, 110% damage proc. Very, very free to play setup. And if you take this guy into World Boss, we'll go against Call here. And we'll just try stage, stage 50 here. And we're going to use White Fox Leadership because he actually does benefit from the 60% damage of Super Villains that she offers because he has leadership. And he'll also benefit from this increased all debuff effect by 40 percent that's going to jack up his all defense down a little bit we'll use these strikers here these are just all damage to super villain strikers he does have the paralysis on the fourth skill and it's an easy rotation honestly this guy's very simple to play crazy survivability so we'll switch old boy three five there's that proc trigger and as soon as he lands Go into the four, and then you can move out of danger. Get away, get away, get away. And then the three, five again. Look at that. Easy. As soon as he jumps, he's going to land again, and then go into the four. Really, really easy character to play. Look at him go. 
And we don't have to worry about that orange attack in front of us because we won't get guard broken with the super armor and we won't take any damage because of the invincibility from the force skill. Look at him go, look at him go. Piece of cake, my friends. This is the beautiful thing about this character. And if this guy gets a tier three, oh my lord. Just imagine how good he's going to be, how strong he's going to be. And he's so fun. Now, I know stage 50 isn't some great gauge. Now, there, now look at the damage there. Now, see if you can get the fist skill and the force skill combined, it is crazy damage. Now, the proc triggered on fist skill, so I couldn't cancel it. It is crazy, crazy damage, which means he's probably going to play really well with a rage. And here's another thing that's nice. Cole did his purple attack. Because we're in that iframe, we don't have to worry about taking any damage. Ooh. And this is easy. This is such an easy clear that it's not even funny. And since you can't use White Fox in regular World Boss, or you can't use White Fox against Null and Mephisto, and you're actually using this guy... Here... There we go. I just wanted to paralyze him real quick there. But since you can't use White Fox and in the Null against Null and Mephisto, this is actually pretty cool. I mean, if you're a player that is still facing the regular wall bosses, Acrease is going to be an easy clear for you. However, the thing is, you know, I do have 4% pierce on my cards, and that is making a difference. I also have almost a 100% energy attack. So he can easily do this, no problem. We'll try to go up to stage 60 and see how we do there. Remember, I have no Urus and he just has 110% damage proc. If you had a 200% damage proc on him, you had Urus on him, you can make him a whole lot stronger. Especially if you have some Pierce already on your cards. And I'm actually really hoping that he does get a tier 3 in all honesty. Because the truth is, you know, and I've said this a whole bunch of times. In this game anymore, I mean, it's Marvel Nalisto fight. That's a little new saying I come up with, Nalisto. Null and Mephisto fight. And if this guy gets a tier 3, then we can actually use him. And, he, and something I didn't even point out earlier is, he also has a self-buffing leadership, which you can take full advantage of whenever that all defense down isn't being applied. Ooh. The bad thing about that force skill is it, it does a short burst of damage. And there I didn't hit my damage accumulation, but it does a short burst of damage, which is, I wish it was a skill that just carried on. There we go. Oh, he cleansed us right there, bastard. Really, it's better not to cancel the fist skill because when you do, you actually decrease your survivability. I mean, when you're just going three, five, and then going into the four, you have so much more survivability. And right now, our proc is off. There we go. Three, five. You don't really have to worry about anything when you're playing with this guy. On all honesty, it's just crazy survivability, which makes him super, super fun. And just imagine if he has a tier three. Right? This crazy heal that he has. Having native super armor, which will make him really great for Null. And the fact that he's a universal type. So if you do a type enhancement for him, and he's got good movement speed also, but you do the type enhancement for him, he'll actually be able to do more damage against Mephisto because he's a blast type. Now, I don't know if he's going to get a tier 3, but I know seeing that we're getting Cersei, it's possible. It is possible. Now, we're actually behind as far as doing stage 60. We're going to go ahead and stop it right now. You really want to get down to the 11th bar by 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So we are behind. So in all honesty, it's probably not the greatest showing of damage. But if he gets a tier 3, having those extra native tier 3 stats, he is a universal type. So he's probably going to get some good stats. And the fact that this guy has... Ignore iframe on him is pretty freaking dope. 
The fact that he has a nice long iframe on a second skill that's on a four second cooldown and the long iframe on the fifth skill. So when you bait your opponents in PvP and you bait him to use their ignore iframe, he's just going to use his iframe and they won't be able to do nothing to him. And they won't be able to reflect his energy damage, which is actually really great. So if properly played, he's actually going to do really well in PvP as well. So getting this, if he gets a tier three, guys, he's probably going to be pretty insane character. I'm actually loving Icarus and having a lot of fun. And I'm actually glad that I waited to talk about him until this sneak peek. I thought this was the perfect time to talk about him. I never knew if Cersei was coming or not, but it just worked out. So let me know how you're all feeling about Cersei, who looks freaking fantastic. I'm actually really excited about her. So let me know what y'all think about Cersei. I'm actually really excited about her. And let me know what you think about the potential of Icarus getting a mid-month tier 3. And I stream on Twitch at Reset, Sunday through Thursday. The link will be in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, y'all. Take care and have a good one.